On the Republican side, the war of words between Donald Trump and Marco Rubio that began during Thursday's debate is only getting worse. Here's Juliana Goldman. He couldn't get elected dog catcher in Florida. He's flying around on Hair Force One. For the second day, Donald Trump and Marco Rubio hurled the kind of insults more often heard in a schoolyard than in a presidential campaign. Rubio, total lightweight, and little mouth on him, bing, bing, bing. Donald Trump, a carn artist, will never get control of this party. I see him starting to sweat. Thank God he has really large ears, the biggest ears I've ever seen, because they were protecting him. The guy with the worst spray tan in America is attacking me for putting on makeup. Donald Trump likes to sue people. He should sue whoever did that to his face with that. Rubio is betting on mudslinging to defeat the GOP frontrunner, but others in the party fear a Trump victory is inevitable. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the next president of the United States of America, Donald Trump. As Trump rewrites the campaign playbook, he's forging new alliances with Republicans betting he's the winner, like with Chris Christie and Maine's Governor Paul LePage, who, according to The New York Times, just last week said a Trump nomination would deeply wound the Republican Party. Meanwhile, Republican leaders like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell are working on a backup plan. The Times says he's given Republican incumbents the green light to break with Trump if he's the nominee. But the Republican Party may be too decentralized. Various attempts to stop Trump went nowhere, like a super PAC proposed in this memo that was circulated last fall to top donors, including billionaire Sheldon Adelson. If Trump wins, it said, everyone loses. Trump's opponents do seem to have unified around calling on him to release his tax returns. To up the pressure, Rubio today provided forms showing he and his wife made $2.3 million from 2010 to 2014 and paid about $526,000 in taxes. But these are just summaries of those filings. They're not the complete returns like Hillary Clinton has provided and like Mitt Romney released in 2012. Juliana Goldman, CBS News, Washington. All right. Now for some analysis. John, let me ask you what you think about this escalation that we've been seeing, the war of words. It was interesting to note on the debate stage, Marco Rubio taking a much different tack. Now, though, it seems like a back and forth in a schoolyard. At, at best. At best. Mm -hmm. at, at best, best right? Yeah. Life is like high yeah. school and, right. and apparently presidential campaigns are, too. Right. Uh, look, I've been talking to some Republicans, and what I'm hearing is that uh, they think this is the last-ditch effort by Rubio. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have much to lose. And if he's lucky... He'll get under Donald Trump's skin, uh, and Donald Trump will start to get a little intemperate. Mm. And the argument make, Rubio's making that's, like, I guess a little more substantive is that Donald Trump shouldn't be trusted with nuclear code. So if you can get him mm -hmm. to blow up and look intemperate mm -hmm. while he's saying he shouldn't be trusted with the nuclear codes, maybe he can start to chip away at Donald Trump. It's, it's a bank shot. Yeah. I mean, but what's intemperate for Donald Trump? You right. know what I mean? Like, what right. is the definition well, like, of that? Well, I yeah. think if his, you know, if, if, if his head blew up or something, <laughs> you know, there'd be like a... Because he said some... steam yeah, already... came out of his ears. Right. No, if, I mean, I'm talking about angry and temperate yeah, rather than... I see. You know, most of the things, when he's cutting other people down, when he's knocking them, mm -hmm. there's, there's ridicule in that. There's it's like a twinkle least, in his eye. Yeah, almost, yeah. a little, yeah. little humor. He's <laughs> right, having, little having fun knocking him around. Right. right. But, you know, I mean, if he got really angry, I see. Uh, that might be something that Rubio could carry against him. But it's a long shot. Yeah. And, and, again, people are telling me they think, you know, he has nothing to lose, so why not try it? Yeah, yeah Steve, what do you think about that? I mean, I guess the notion is that Donald Trump has been sort of the happy warrior up until this point, and maybe with these concerted attacks, continued attacks, uh, that he'll give and he'll be angry, and that'll be enough to turn off some voters. Yeah, I just, I mean, I think, you know, Rubio has a lot of ground to make up be between him and Donald Trump, and I just don't know that the, that insulting his way uh, forward is the way to really do it. I think he's got to make an argument that he's a better choice, and he's got to try to peel off some of the support that has, uh, that, that's going to Trump, which is, you know, people who are angry at how Washington's working, and they want somebody to go in there and shake things up. And I think going in there and talking about spray tans and, and hair, which is hilarious, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it uh, as somebody who likes to watch uh, stand-up comedy once in a while, but I, I just don't know how that gets you 10 points uh, if you're down to Donald Trump in all these states. Um, I'm told we have that bite. Let's go ahead and play it. It is time to open our eyes. It is time to open our eyes. We cannot allow a con artist to get access to the nuclear codes of the United States of America. 
It's a big fraud. And it's time to open our eyes, and we will in the days and weeks to come. I'm confident of it. Now, what happens when you attack Donald? He goes on Twitter. You guys want to have a little fun today? All right. All right. Well, last night he actually was pretty calm after I punched him around a little bit. He kind of, he's, I think he's, um, well, I, I think, yeah, he's learning how to spell, I guess, somebody said here. But he's flying around on Hair Force One and uh, tweeting. So here's the one tweet he put out. He put out a picture of me having makeup put on me at the, at the debate which is amazing to me that a guy with the worst spray tan in America is attacking me for putting on makeup. Donald Trump likes to sue people. He should sue whoever did that to his face with that. All right, let's go to our Nancy Cortez, who is in Columbia, South Carolina, at Clinton campaign headquarters there. Nancy, I imagine the Democrats and Hillary Clinton and her campaign in particular are watching all of this stuff happening on the Republican side very, very closely. They're definitely getting some good ideas for one-liners from Marco Rubio. You can almost see them at campaign headquarters in Brooklyn going, ooh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, let's remember that for a couple months from now. Um, and you have to wonder where Marco Rubio would be in the polls today if he had started um, using some of those attack lines a few months ago instead of going after Ted Cruz. And not just, you know, the sort of easy one-liners about uh, hair and spray tans, but as he did in the debate, really putting uh, Donald Trump's record front and center, uh, pointing out how many times he's been sued, pointing out, uh, you know, the uh, essentially the fraud that was Trump University, pointing out that his health care plan consists entirely of uh, getting rid of, uh, uh, of um, the lines between the states, as, as Marco Rubio put it, uh, you know, and, and encouraging more competition. Uh, and I think that the Clinton campaign realizes, and they're really grappling with, the reality that if this is a Clinton-Trump race, it is going to look nothing like the race that they planned to run or wanted to run, and there's no use crying over spilled milk. You can't take the high ground indefinitely against a candidate like Trump who's going to go for the jugular. Uh, even if Hillary Clinton, let's say, ends up being uh, viewed uh, more favorably than Donald Trump, even if she is, ends up being viewed more honest and trustworthy, if he drags her reputation through the mud, and you know he's going to be talking every day about Benghazi, about the emails, about things that other candidates wouldn't talk about, like her husband's infidelities, uh, she is going to have to come up with a plan to hit back at him. And maybe it is this approach that Rubio's taking where he kind of does it with a smile, where he's sort of saying, get a load of this guy. Can you believe this guy? Uh, he's a con artist. He's a joke. Uh, and, and sort of, you know, ends up making Donald Trump look a little small, which uh, no Republican candidate has really been doing. For the most part, they were afraid to take him on. They decided to take on each other instead. Uh, and once they did decide to really go after him, uh, you know, candidates like Jeb Bush and now Marco Rubio, the consensus is that it's probably too late. Are they worried at all, uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign, you think, Nancy, about, though, the appeal in some parts of the electorate, not just the Republican side, but uh, people who are looking uh, at Donald Trump as possibly the person who might be able to shake things up? Obviously, Bernie Sanders is trying to be, be in that outsider lane as well. But so, right. there is some polling to suggest that Donald Trump does have some appeal in blue states. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely worried about that, uh, especially because every um, every conventional assumption about uh, a ceiling on Donald Trump's popularity has been incorrect. I mean, there's a new poll out today that shows him dominating in Massachusetts. You know, this is a very moderate state uh, in the Northeast that Democrats uh, intend to win in November. And here's Donald Trump. Uh, leading the Republican pack by some 20 or 30 points. And so uh, they're absolutely worried uh, that while you might assume that a candidate like Trump, who has very uh, high unfavorable ratings right now among Democrats and independents, they know that he's going to change uh, his tune after he wins the 
Republican nomination. If he does, he'll start sounding much more moderate. Uh, he'll say that he wants to make deals between the two sides and that he's a businessman and he can cut those deals. And they are very worried about it. Uh, there is no playbook uh, for running a campaign against Donald Trump. We've seen these Republican candidates flail about as they try to do it. Uh, Hillary Clinton, when she has once or twice uh, uh, gone after Trump, called him a sexist, uh, that didn't go work out very well for her. He really uh, hit back and hit back hard. And so I think the Clinton campaign, uh, assuming that they do, uh, you know, continue to do well uh, and assuming that she continues to look more and more like the Democratic nominee, uh, they're going to have some very difficult decisions about how they wage this fight. It is not her uh, sort of natural inclination to get down in the mud with another candidate and sort of thrash it out. But you're going to have to do some of that if you're going up against a candidate like Donald Trump.